let's stand together. Lord, we welcome you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Ask that you would lead us. Draw us close to you, Lord. those who are still waiting this morning, I ask that you would meet us right where we are. Uh, there's prayer available up here or over there. Uh, just as we worship, if the Lord puts it on your heart to come and receive prayer, don't hesitate. Thank you, Lord. your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise, pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise, you all me. Great are you, Lord. You give life. you 
earth. All the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. They'll sing praise. in our lungs it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise to you only. Great are you, Lord. Great are you,
You are so gentle, Lord. You are so gentle. You are forgiving. You hold me close to your heart. When I am distant, you show me mercy. mercy this morning, Lord. Your faithfulness, God. Oftentimes, throughout Scripture and in our own experience, as we slow down and take time and refocus and focus on the Lord, uh, two things happen. We experience His presence, His holiness, but we also are reminded of our own uh, unholiness, our own sin, our own shame and guilt and all the things that keep us separated from him. Confession is simply agreeing with God, saying to God, yep, you're right. <laughs> to Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Just invite you in the quietness of your heart to... Uh, See what the Lord would, would say to you and then respond to him.
most merciful God. Go back a couple. One more. We confess that apart from Christ, we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. So in the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ has given to die for you. And for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become children of God and bestows on you his Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you. All right. Today's psalm reading is from Psalm 40, beginning of verse 11. Lord, don't hold back your tender mercies from me. Let your unfailing love and faithfulness always protect me. For trouble surround me, surrounds me, too many to count. My sins pile up high, so I can't see my way out. They outnumber the hairs on my head, I've lost all courage. Please, Lord, rescue me. Come quickly, Lord, and help me. May those who try to destroy me be humiliated and be put to shame. May those who take and delight in my trouble be turned back in disgrace. Let them be horrified by their shame, for they say, Aha, we've got him now. But may all who search for you be filled with joy and gladness in you. May those who love your salvation repeatedly shout, the Lord is great. As for me, since I am poor and needy, let the Lord keep me in his thoughts. You are the helper of my and my savior. O oh God, do not delay. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will ever be. Amen. This morning's epistle lesson is from Hebrews. Chapter 10. <clears throat> that is why when Christ came into the world and said to God, you do not want animal sacrifices or sin offerings, but you have given me a body to offer. You were not pleased with burnt offerings or other offerings for sin. Then I said, look, I have come to do your will. O God, it is as it is written for me in the scriptures. First, Christ said, you did not want animal sacrifices or sin offerings or burnt offerings or other offerings for sin, nor were you pleased with them, though they're required by the law of Moses. And then he said, look, I have come to do your will. He cancels, <clears throat> cancels the first covenant in order to put the second into effect. For God's will was for us to be made holy by the sacrifice of the body of, of Jesus Christ once and for all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gospel lesson is from Mark 7, beginning at 30, chapter, uh, verse 31. Jesus left Tyre and went to, to Sidon before going back to the Sea of Galilee and the region of the ten towns. A deaf man with a speech impediment was brought to him, and the people begged Jesus to lay his hands on the man to heal him. And Jesus led him away from the crowd so that he, they could be alone. He put his fingers into the man's ears. Then spitting on his own fingers, he touched the man's tongue. Looking up to heaven, he sighed 
and side epitha, which means be opened. In instantly, man could hear perfectly and his tongue was freed to, so he could speak plainly. Jesus told the crowd not to tell anyone, but the more he told them not to, the more they spread the news. They were completely amazed and they said again and again, everything he does is wonderful. He even makes the deaf to hear and gives speech to those who cannot speak. This is the gospel of the Lord. Well, good morning. Thanks, Lee. I am not a good waiter. I don't like to wait. I don't like to wait in lines. I don't like traffic on the freeway. I'm one of those guys. I'm looking ahead. Okay, there's cars. All right. Let's go. Um, anybody else? Not good waiters. Thanks. We got a good team here. Uh, Psalm forty. It's it's interesting. It's a uh, it's a prayer. So by the way, um, we've been going through uh, Psalms of summer, a summer of Psalms, and uh, today. The focus is on uh, Psalm 40. We sang the song, I Waited. Um, and uh, it's, it starts out um, with uh, David saying that he, he waits patiently for the Lord uh, to help him. And then uh, it a, it's a, becomes a prayer of, of help for when troubles abound. They pile up more than the hairs on my head. Uh, and... Um, and then it's, it's worsened uh, by our enemies that, that gloat over us when we're down. Ha <laughs> ha, got them. Um, and, uh, and then the, right in the middle, there's this amazing prophecy about uh, the Messiah. And the book of Hebrews puts um, uh, David's words and, and points to Jesus as the fulfillment. Um, and then, uh, and then back to David's appeal for, for help. Um, it's different than like Psalm 13 that starts out, how long, O Lord, where are you? <laughs> how, you know, why do I have to wrestle with my own thoughts? Here, he begins, I waited patiently for the Lord to help me. And he turned to me and heard my cry. I'm not, I'm not sure just how patient David really was. Uh, he seemed pretty compulsive at times. Um, but at this point, on this day, as he's writing, um, he's waiting. He's waiting on the Lord. And when you wait on the Lord, this is what happens. He lifted me out of the pit of despair, out of the mud and the mire. He set my feet on solid ground and steadied me as I walked along. It's an interesting verse um, anybody ever uh, gone on a, a long hike and it's just mud and it's slippery? We, uh, Tara and I visited our, our friends, their missionaries in Tanzania last summer and we got to hike at the base of Mount Kilimanjaro and for I don't know how many hours we just slid sideways, went forward a little bit, uh, we have great pictures of mud, muddy shoes, muddy butts. It's, it was awesome. Everybody went down. But it's just such a great picture that the Lord, he lifted David, he lifts us out of the pit of despair, out of the mud and the mire. And then not only that, but he, he set my feet on solid ground and he steadied me as I walked along. He has given me 
a new song to sing, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see what he has done and be amazed. They will put their trust in the Lord. We just read uh, the gospel and Jesus uh, comes to the, uh, the man who's deaf and uh, interesting the way he heals him, yeah? <laughs> um, can you imagine going to your doctor and uh, you're not able to speak and the doctor spits on his fingers and touches your tongue. You're like, <laughs> but that's what Jesus does. And, and then Jesus just says, be opened. I love the way Jesus prays. We need to pray more like Jesus. It's not long-winded, oh God, if you would only. It's be opened. His authority becomes our authority, he says. Instantly the man could hear perfectly and his tongue was freed. And many will see what he has done and be amazed. They will put their trust in the Lord. When the Lord does miracles, we were talking about this the other night. When the Lord does a miracle in somebody's life, it jumpstarts faith. It bypasses a lot of arguments. Um, if, if the Lord touches and, and heals someone, uh, the result is, is joy and trust. Uh, and so in the Gospels, uh, in the New Testament, the church world be became a worldwide movement. Miracles uh, jump-started the church but they continue to jumpstart people's faith. We get to pray for people, and sometimes the Lord does miracles. Not all the time. I wish I could say every time I prayed for somebody, uh, a miracle happened. But um, another thing that we talked about the other night was, as you pray for somebody, it's important that they feel loved by God and heard by God. And... Uh, and sometimes he miraculously heals. Put a new song. And then there's a, a little shift in this psalm. I'm going to skip. He says, Oh, the joys of those who trust the Lord, who have no confidence in the proud or in those who worship idols. Now, when... It's not a word we use a lot. I mean, what comes to mind when you hear the word idol? Uh, maybe a, a statue somebody made and they pray to that. Or, But idols, uh, it's simply something that you worship other than God. You invest your emotional energy um, into this, this thing or this person or this hobby or this education or this religion and uh, you derive meaning and satisfaction from that thing. Um, your connection, you're dependent on that thing to get you through the day, get you through the night, and that becomes an idol. Uh, Matt Redman, he has a song, he says, everybody praises the thing they love. And, uh, you can know that something is an idol if, uh, if you cannot live without it for a time. Uh, one of my best friends, John Hobbs, longshoreman, San Pedro, California, uh, when, he was, when he was a young man, he, he lived on, uh, on the beach in Maui for a while just so he could surf all the time. Amazing surfer. He gave me my first surfboard way back when. Uh, I, I've seen John do things on a wave that I've never seen anybody else do. Paddling out towards the ocean, a wave's about to break. He hits it and jumps up on his board and catches the wave. Uh, just, he's just a joy to watch. <laughs> um, and we were camping at the beach together, and uh, he said to me, you know, I think God is asking me to fast from surfing for a while. I'm like, doesn't sound like God to me, John. 
He's not telling me to do that. <laughs> and I didn't get it at the time. I said, no way. Uh, you live to surf, John. And he said, that's the point. Uh, it's become more important to me than, than God. And then, but now it makes sense because now John, uh, because of health issues, is not able to, to surf. Um, so instead he, he shows up and he cheers other people on. He's taking pictures, um, not living in self-pity because he can't surf, um, but um, there's other things more important to him. And um, Jesus is more important. People are more important to him. So that's what happens when you, when you turn away from idols and you turn back to the Lord. Uh, it brings healing. It brings joy. Uh, it sets you up for a bigger life. Uh, oh, the joys who trust in the Lord. Uh, I've had some cars that I've loved very much. <laughs> My first car ever was a 55 Chevy pickup. I could go on and on. Tara could tell you. Every time I see one, oh. and she says, I, yeah, there it is. <laughs> and when I, was, uh, when I was 19, I was a brand new Christian. Um, I traded my Chevy truck for a 69 VW bus. It had the sliders on both sides. It was custom made for a bakery. And I could go on and on about this bus too. If you've never driven a VW bus, you don't know just how fun it is to drive. And I was coming home late one night, and uh, I got hit. I just saw the guy out of the corner of my eye, and he hit the back corner of, of the bus, and it pitched me up in the air and landed on the driver's side, and I slid for maybe 100 feet, and then hit a curb and bounced back up. And uh, as soon as the impact, uh, my immediate reaction was strange. It was, thank you, Jesus. And I just kind of relaxed. And I think that's probably what saved me. Because when, I, when, I, when it was back up on four wheels, the frame, it was like this instead of like this. My, uh, the... Uh, Spare tire had flown past me, knocked out the windshield, and was rolling up the street. And uh, the Lord had spared my life, but not, not the bus. <laughs> Martin Luther had this to say. He was commenting on, on Ten Commandments. And the commandment, you are to have no other gods. And if you've read the catechisms, he asks a question and then he gives an answer. Question, what does it mean to have a God or what is God? And he said this, a God is the term for that to which we are to look for all good and in which we are to find refuge in all need. Anything on which your heart relies and depends, I say, that is really your God. Tim Keller, one of my favorite pastors and authors, um, wrote this. There's, there's four questions you can ask to discover what your idols are. And it's not a question of if we have idols. We all have idols. The first question for discernment is, what, uh, what do you enjoy daydreaming about? Um, what occupies your mind when you have nothing else to think about? One or two daydreams are not an indication of idolatry, but ask rather, what do you habitually think about to get joy and comfort in the privacy of your own heart? That's the first one. Second one, look at how you spend your money. Jesus said, where your treasure is, there is your heart also. Tim Keller says this, your money flows most effortlessly towards your heart's greatest love. I love thrift stores, confession. <laughs> um, 
And it's gotten bad at times, friends. I can't drive past <laughs> thrift store. Um, when the love of God uh, consumes you, it's an effortless thing to give towards ministry, to give towards charity. Uh, we're going uh, to give you some, some ways to give towards, uh, towards those in, in Maui. Uh, your bank records don't lie to you. Um, third, uh, look for what you are really living for. Good way to discern this is how do you respond to unanswered prayers and frustrated hopes? When you pray and you work for something and you don't get it and you respond with explosive anger or deep despair, then you may have found your real God. So what do you daydream about? Where's your money going? What do you really live for? And then last, uh, look at your most uncontrollable emotions, um, especially those that never seem to lift, and they drive you to do things that are wrong. If you're angry, ask, is there something here that is too important for me? Anger, anger is a gift from God. Uh, it's, it's not a sin to be angry. Uh, it, it's, like, uh, it's like a temperature gauge. Um, it just tells you something's going on here, pay attention. Um, what, what am I so angry about? Um, or uh, something uh, that causes strong fear or, or despair or guilt. Um, is there something in my life that's being threatened that I think uh, is a necessity when maybe it's not? Do I feel that I have this thing, I must have this thing to be fulfilled and significant? And then I, I love this quote, when you ask questions like that, when you pull your emotions up by the roots, you will often find your idols clinging to them. Our emotions are a gift from God. They're meant to point us uh, to pay attention to, uh, to what am I worshiping? What, uh, we don't use that word a lot, but what, what's becoming so all-consuming to me that uh, the Lord's saying, give that to me. I've got something better for you. Um, so the, the law, it's a mirror. It just shows us uh, where, where we're falling short. The gospel is that today the Lord just wants to give us a gift of faith to, to, turn, uh, to turn to him instead of idols and, uh, and that Jesus becomes more beautiful to our imagination, more attractive to our heart than idols. This is becoming one of my favorite verses, and, and after the summer, I think I'd like to take a few weeks just to focus on this. It's from Colossians 2. Apostle Paul says, Therefore, as you received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. So that as he pulls up the roots of our emotions, uh, we get a, a clear view of where our heart is, then Christ is planted. It's not enough just to take out something of our lives because uh, it'll get filled with something. Uh, but Jesus himself becomes rooted and established in our hearts. And then the result is we abound in thanksgiving. Um, o oh Lord my God, you have performed many wonders for us. Your plans for us are too numerous to list. You have no equal. If I tried to recite all of your wonderful deeds, I would never come to the end of them. But let's go ahead and 
try for a sec. Is there something just real quick, 30 seconds, something you're thankful for the Lord has done for you recently that you want to just speak out, give him credit for? Working on our kids. It's hard to say that without getting teary, so I won't. <laughs> yeah. What else? What's the Lord doing? Is he doing wonders in your life? Something you're thankful for this morning. Yeah, don't want to take it for granted. Yeah. Healing, restoring. As I look at my friend Glenn here, up and walking. <laughs> He's doing wonders in our midst all the time. It's good for us to slow down and give him credit and celebrate uh, with each other. And then he says, Lord, you take no delight in sacrifices or offerings. Now that you have made me listen, and the, the Hebrew there is literally, you have dug out my ears. You pierced my ears, as some translation. It's an interesting phrase. You have made me listen. <laughs> I finally understand. You don't require burnt offerings or sin offerings. Even in the Old Testament, when he did require burnt offerings and sin offerings, what he was after was a change of heart. He's always been after that. And uh, at the right time, he came and did the sacrifice for us so that uh, we, could, we could know his incredible love for us and freedom, and I believe he continues to dig out our ears, make us listen. <laughs> uh, and then this prophetic um, word about the Messiah. Uh, then I said, look, I have come, as it is written about me in the scriptures, I take joy in doing your will, my God, for your instructions are written on my heart. I have told all your people about your justice. I have not been afraid to speak out. As you, O oh Lord, well know, I have not kept the good news of your justice hidden in my heart. I have talked about your faithfulness and saving power. I have told everyone in the great assembly of your unfailing love and faithfulness. That is the picture. It's a job description. It's exactly what the book of Hebrews says Jesus did, that the scriptures were pointing to him and that Jesus brings justice. He, uh, he brings uh, the faithfulness of God, saving power. And then Back to David's prayer. Lord, don't hold back your tender mercies from me. Let your unfailing love and faithfulness always protect me. Two things are going on for David simultaneously. Wonders, too many to, to list, but also my troubles. <laughs> my troubles surround me, too many to count. My sin. So you ever experience that? On the one hand, you're experiencing the presence and the grace of God, his wonders, and on the other, like, oh, man, especially in the middle of the night, my sins, my troubles, they pile up so high I can't see my way out. They outnumber the hairs on my head. I have lost all courage. For King David... Sins of other people, but also his own sins uh, piled up. Uh, you think your sins are bad. 
David, he had a young soldier killed so he could marry that soldier's wife who he had slept with already. That's pretty severe. But sin is sin. Whether it's that severe or it's just, once again, I know the Lord's showing me the idols I've been turning to. And one of the effects, that very last line of my sin, is that it takes away my courage, my confidence in the Lord. When I wallow in my guilt and my shame and my idols, uh, it takes my courage away. And so the remedy for David and for us, please, Lord, rescue me. Come quickly, Lord, and help me. Please tell me you guys have seen the movie Princess Bride. Yes? Okay, good. We just watched it again this week. <laughs> and there's a, the scene where Princess Buttercup and Wesley are going through the fire swamp. And there's quicksand. Is it lightning sand? And the rodents of unusual size. <laughs> and they're walking along and Wesley is sweeping her before she's burnt and they're just talking and suddenly the princess disappears in the quicksand. And right away, uh, Wesley looks around, he finds a vine, grabs it, and he dives in after her. And uh, I'll give credit to a friend of mine who pointed this out, but it's a perfect picture of the gospel. That we're walking along and suddenly we're pulled down into the pit of despair, as David says. As a nation, as the world, a pit of despair. And so what God did was he came down and he dove in to our pit. That's what the cross is. That Jesus has come to be born and live and die and be raised again. He dives into our pit. He doesn't wait for us to get it right, to work things out and finally come back to him. He just dives in after us and he does it over and over. And the good news is that there's, the rest of that scene is, you see first uh, Wesley's hands coming up out of the sand and uh, the princess is just, she's wrapped around his shoulders and all she is, she's just hanging on for dear life. And uh, they both finally gasping for breath. Um, they're safe until the rodents of unusual size come in. They have to wrestle with them. But, uh, but it's just a great picture that Jesus comes and he dives into our pit of despair and he says, hang on, just hang on, I've got you. And he pulls us up and he does it again today. The offer is good uh, for us today. Just hang on. May those who try to destroy me be humiliated and put to shame. May those who take delight in my trouble be turned back in disgrace. Let them be horrified by their shame. I love this. For they said, aha, we've got him now. <laughs> but may all who search for you be filled with joy and gladness in you. May those who love your salvation repeatedly shout, the Lord is great. I think we should do that right now. I, we're going to have a little competition, see who's louder. Okay. Just to the side. One, two, three. The Lord is great. One, two, three. Oh, man. That was close. <laughs> yeah, maybe all together. All together, one more time. One, two, three. The Lord is great. And as you do that, you feel something lift. Um, I think um, true worship happens when 
we are in the pit and you may not have enough energy to shout it but at least to say Lord Lord I I want to trust you uh, help me trust you one of my favorite prayers is just mercy mercy Lord when I'm overwhelmed by guilt or shame or or regrets or the troubles of people close to me that I just can't fix. I said, mercy, Lord. But there's times for us to shout, the Lord is great. Finally, as for me, since I am poor and needy, let the Lord keep me in his thoughts. You are my helper and my savior. Oh my God, do not delay. Remember how it started? I waited on the Lord. Now he's saying, hurry up, God. <laughs> oh my God, do not delay. So we go back and forth. And I love the Psalms for a lot of reasons, but one is there's just honest prayers um, that uh, I wait, oh, I'm doing good. Oh, overwhelmed by troubles. But I'm going to trust the God, please. <laughs> Do not delay. Let's speak together the, the Apostles' Creed, the, the faith, the that's been handed down to us. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. If the Lord puts on your heart to, to give towards the ministries here, there's offering plates in the back. Let's pray for the church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Let's pray together. Lord, for ourselves, we, we ask for grace to wait, Lord. And for, um, for patience, for your timing, but also persistence, Lord, in asking you. You invite us to keep on knocking, keep on asking, keep on seeking. Give us that kind of grace, Lord, when we're just in the pit of despair. Dive in, Lord. Pull us out once again. Pray for our, our neighbors and our neighborhood. Even here, Lord, uh, within walking distance here, that you would show us how to. What is it you're up to, Jesus? We want to join you, Lord. You're already at work. We know that. And then further out, our families, our neighborhoods, where, where you have each of us, Lord. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear what you're doing. And then a, a boldness, a courage to. Uh, to join you, Lord, cooperate with you. Thank you for the work you're doing here, Lord, at, at Good Shepherd. Lord, thank you for Rita and for her staff here at the preschool and ask continued uh, favor for them and patience and a lot of joy for the kids and for, for the staff, Lord. And of course, Lord, we, we pray for, for Maui and the Big Island for all those who suffered incredible loss, 
families, Lord. Bring your comfort. Show us how we can help, Lord. Pray for your church, Lord, to rise up out of the ashes. To make you known, Lord. And just in the, the quietness of your heart, I invite you to, to bring to the Lord And we pray together the prayer the Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to let's stand together. That's a dangerous prayer. May the Lord bless you and keep you and give you grace to wait on him. The Lord give you faith to believe that he is good and is indeed your helper, comforter, and deliverer. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Got a couple announcements. Our handsome model. <laughs> Couldn't be me, but anyway. Uh, again, we have the, the Kahlo handout. Pick up yours in the back on the table there. Uh, past handouts are also available. Have a seat, it's gonna be a little while. <laughs> uh, wonderful news, celebration of UCS 19th anniversary, Friday, August 18th, evening worship, Kanikapila style, so come and jam with everybody. Saturday morning, 6.30 to 9, uh, morning coffee and prayer. So come and avail yourself to that as well. 
and Sunday at one o'clock you can worship with them and also potluck, right? So bring food. Okay, don't just come and worship. Okay, next. Today, of course, there's something, you know, something going on. Four o'clock, we will have Pastor Bob. The Wang Dang Do. Wang Dang Do. That's a new word you have to learn. <laughs> so uh, we expect a whole uh, bunch of people to come. If at all possible, if you can come early and park at the Higashi Hongwanji uh, on the corner there, Alaneo and Kuakini, they've opened up their parking lot. So enter on the Kuakini gate, which will be open, and go all the way to the back of their building, and then there's lots of parking there. So that would be open for us while we have the installation and reception. So uh, we kind of trade off parking because when they have their oval dents, they use ours, we use theirs. So anyway, so that's a wonderful thing. So if you're able to bring an appetizer or dessert to share or just come and celebrate with us today, it's going to be wonderful. Wang dang do. <laughs> and finally, next slide. Oh, okay, thank you. Um, we all have heard about the uh, hor horrific things that have happened on Maui, especially in Lahaina and also in upcountry Kula. Uh, we ask again, as Pastor said, to pray for the victims, the families, the homes, businesses, and all the historical treasures that were lost and the uh, continued suffering that uh, people have uh, been enduring. Uh, we do have an LCMS church on uh, Maui. It's at in it's called Emmanuel Lutheran Church, and we'll leave the address up there if you would like to uh, send financial assistance to them as well. Um, if they're not actually affected directly, they are also taking those funds and supporting others. And uh, finally, uh, he referred to me as the model. I'm not really a model, but um, this is a shirt that's put out by a place called Warrior Printing on Sand Island Access Road, Warrior Printing. So they're often a little, um, O Nene Street, I believe. It's right behind American Carpet One. And so they've made these t-shirts. Uh, they're $25 each. The net proceeds of everything that they do is being matched by the Council for Native Hawaiian um, uh, Advancement. So as of, I think, Friday or Saturday, they have already started in the tens of thousands of dollars that people have bought these shirts for. And these shirts basically say you know, four things. The first thing is Ma Lama. Can you all say ma lama? Ma. And what does ma lama mean? <laughs> Hawaiian. You don't know. It means to take care. To take care. Yeah. And this one might be a little bit less. Let me remember. Ka ko'o. This one. Wang dang do. He knows it. It means to lift up or to raise up. Okay, or support. And of course, ko kua means to help, and Maui. So if you'd like to purchase these shirts, they do have them. You can go online called Warrior Printing, or you can go down there and purchase them yourself. Uh, they've, they're printing hundreds of them just to support our, our family, friends, and, and neighbors on Maui. So again, if you'd like to give directly to Emmanuel Lutheran, the, we'll leave that up there. And I think that's it. Lord bless you guys. Have a great afternoon, and if you can make it back this afternoon, we're going to have some fun.